this is Sasha Carrion, and you are watching The Success Mindset. My guest today is Julie Weiss, an amazing and inspiring woman who ran 52 marathons in 52 weeks in 2013. Hi, Julie. Hi, thank you so much for having me here today. I appreciate it. Julie, it's great having you here, and you are such an inspiration for so many people. Wow, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I just happen to love running marathons, but there's also a lot more that goes into that. Um, my passion of running marathons turned into something, a journey um, to raise awareness for pancreatic cancer. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, sadly, my father passed away in 2010 from pancreatic cancer, and he passed away just 35 days after his diagnosis. And I felt so helpless, but I knew that I needed to do something to make a difference. And since my father was my biggest fan, I mean, really, there was nothing like the joy he would get when he watched me run. So I thought, okay, I'm going to have this crazy half-baked idea. I woke up one morning, and I'm like, I'm going to run. 52 marathons in 52 weeks. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to raise a ton of money and a lot of awareness to make a difference and to help people beat pancreatic cancer. And you have now raised over $300,000. That's right. Thank you. Through my website, marathongoddess.com, we've raised over $300,000. My goal is actually $1 million. So yes. I really want to make a big difference. The thing about pancreatic cancer is that there is no early detection method, there is no cure, and by the time that people are diagnosed, it's usually too late, and it's only had, it has a 6% survival rate after mm -hmm. five years. Now that to me was unacceptable, so more money needs to be raised for these scientists to research this disease and get a cure. I mean, it's just devastating. So many people I've lost from this disease and the friends that I've made along the way. So I'm still running and I'm still going, maybe not a marathon a week anymore, but um, you know, we never give up. At what number are you at now? Good question. Uh, thank you for asking. I'm actually about to run my lifetime marathon number 94 wow. at the Chicago Marathon in about 10 days. Now, Julie, how is it that you muster that, that level of physical energy and endurance to run so many marathons? That's a really good question. And honestly, it's because of the people that I'm running for. Every marathon that I run, I dedicate to somebody who's fighting pancreatic cancer or somebody, sadly, that we lost or somebody, thankfully, who has survived. So when I'm out there running, honestly, my battle out there on the marathon course is nothing compared to what these people are having to go through on a daily basis. So I think about them when I run and it gives me energy, it gives me goosebumps. I can, I mean, I can I mean, physically even see them. Yeah, so it, it, it keeps me going and I'm not saying that it's um, easy out there on the course. No, it's not. You know, I don't run them super fast because if I, I'm not really racing for a time here. Um, my only competitor out there is to beat pancreatic cancer. So it's just about finishing, you know and showing people that really and truly you can do anything you put your mind to when you believe in yourself first. Now have you ever felt like, you know what, I can't, I can't do it? I, did you ever in 2013 ever feel like, I can't do those 52? I've done my best, I, I just can't. There were moments of despair, I have to be honest. You know, I'd get up in the morning, especially after um, just running a marathon and I had a double marathon that weekend <sighs> or even a triple. Mm -hmm which, you know, I was, um, I was in tears, you know. Um, there was times that I was actually in tears, but again, you know, I thought about these people and I thought about, I can't give up, you know, I'm, I'm halfway through my goal, or even when I was on marathon number five and my body was in shock, I was like, what am I doing? But um, it was just really and truly one step in front of the other and having that passion and having that enthusiasm and having that goal to to really go for it and know that you've got friends you've got family out there you've got people that are looking to you and as hope you know as inspiration so it, it's not about me it's about them it's about finding a cure for pancreatic cancer now marathons just happen to be the way that i can raise awareness through my running so and you did it in a way that you love because you love marathon running 
Absolutely. And I think that's a big key to success is that you have to love whatever you're doing. This way you're going to have that consistency and that motivation to follow through with it. That's really good. That's a great point. And I always said that is that in my journey, when you, when you find something you love, that's when the miracles happen. Because how on earth could I run 52 marathons in 52 weeks, have a full-time job, and not get injured? I mean, that in itself is a miracle. Because I was running, not for me, but I was running for, for these people, for my dad, for people that I loved and I cared about, and for a cause that I was so passionate about, and still am. Um, but seriously, I would, I would leave my office on a Friday, I would travel to a different state or sometimes country, run mm -hmm. the marathon on a Sunday, jump right back on the plane and come home and get to work Monday morning. And I did all of that without one injury. I mean, that's a miracle. Yeah. So that's what happens when you've got passion and purpose and love. And a lot of that has to do with her success mindset. She had so much passion, so much love, so much determination that it just fueled her in such a way that even her body could take that level of, of work and endurance, the strength, what, what it takes to run that many marathons in, in 52 weeks. It's actually 1,362.4 miles, if you can believe that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a lot. But 1,362.4 miles of fighting pancreatic cancer. That's wonderful. And what's next? Well, I am still running. I'm not running a marathon a week anymore. Maybe um, about two a week since I'm on my journey now to 100 marathons, 100 lifetime marathons, which I will complete at the 2016 Los Angeles Marathon. And I'm also writing a book. So it's been a process. Um, that's a you know rewrite after a rewrite, but I hope to have the book out very, very soon to inspire people and not have to put my body through another 52 marathons to do it. <laughs> Speaking of which, what pearls of wisdom can you give people who are considering starting to get into marathon running? You would have to want it. You have to kind of, you don't have to love running, but you have to start slow. Many, many people will make the mistake, they'll go out too fast, they're like, I'm gonna run a marathon, and they'll go do a training run, and they'll go out too fast, and they'll burn themselves out, and then they'll hate running. So it's very important to have fun. That's number one, is that you're having fun, you're doing something that you love, something that you want to do. And to find a training program, find friends, even your dog, something that inspires you, find a purpose, you know, and you know, if it's just, if it's to, um, to lose weight, wonderful. I did that as well. When I started running, I was about 30, 35 pounds overweight. And within about four or five months, uh, not only was it good for my waistline, but it was, you know, it was also good for my whole outlook on life became more positive. So, you know, you're, you're doing something and it really making an investment in yourself and then you will help others, but it's got to start with you. So have fun. Now, one of the things that I also wanted to point out was that this all started with an idea, an idea of something that she just randomly thought up of and you thought, okay, I love marathon running. My father was a huge advocate of what I did. What if I can make a difference by continuing to run in his name? And so I love the fact that that idea came to you and you followed it. You, you, you made something amazing out of it. That's right, I, I did. I mean, as much as people thought it was crazy, a crazy idea, I think I, I knew one other person that did this and I thought, you know, maybe this is something I can do. And as soon as I got rid of the maybe, I said, it is something I can do. Yeah. You know, and I was focused and I'm like finding a way to make this happen. And uh, it just takes an idea and it's in you. I mean, the idea is in you and, and you just have to find the steps follow your to intuition. follow it and make it happen. Julie, what do you believe have been the keys to your success? That's a great question. I would say, it's very, very important to find your purpose, whatever your purpose is. And make sure it's something that you love, for sure. Make sure you're having fun. Mm -hmm. And make sure you put in the hard work. But when you're working on something that you love and you're passionate about, it's not really gonna feel like work. So 
So find your goal, find your purpose, make a goal and do what you love. I would also say that um, imagine, imagine and visualize what success looks like to you. And that is such a big key to success because when you think about it, if your mind doesn't know what success looks like to you, it doesn't know where to go. And that by doing that imagery, you're able to train your mind and have your mind understand exactly what it is that you want it to do. Exactly. Julie, tell us a little bit about Project Purple and what you're doing there. Well, Project Purple is the largest pancreatic cancer running charity. They actually have um, official charity partner with the Boston Marathon, with the Chicago Marathon, the New York City Marathon. So uh, their motto is running to beat pancreatic cancer and that's a perfect fit for me. So I am now their ambassador and I'm helping to uh, promote awareness and raise money and we are doing wonderful. We just hit $1 million um, a few days ago and we do research grants, patient support, scholarships for children of uh, parents who have been affected by pancreatic cancer. So they are doing wonderful things, changing the world, changing the course of this awful disease and I'm hoping to make this charity um, bigger and better and move it over here to the west side, get a west side chapter and grow it until we have a cure. So. Um, if, you're more in, if you want to get on our team, if that's something that speaks to your heart, you can go to my website, MarathonGoddess.com, and I'm happy to give you more information on how you can get involved. Wonderful. Well, Julie, I know that uh, this journey has started many years back, but I know that this is just the beginning of all the wonderful work that you're doing. And I know from Facebook, because we're friends on Facebook, that you not only do you w raise awareness as well as funds to to help put an end to pancreatic cancer. But on top of that, you have given a lot of support to a lot of people with pancreatic cancer. And I know that for a lot of these people, your support means so much. And so I just wanna say thank you for everything you. that you have done and everything that you are doing because you are truly making this world a better place. You are truly making thank a you. difference. And so are you. So what do we always say? We got this!